And then I want to talk about, because you have 175 years of yep. experience in this. I've I'm starting to get a little bit older and my eyes are starting to go bad. And although that's not the topic of the day, it is a terrible segue into what we'll be talking about with <laughs> Trevor, with this microscope. And what more importantly, what you guys want to connect with is the products and making sure the quality is there and being able to see any imperfections in the quality in so many different areas of manufacturing. We all know how important our CMM rooms are and we know how significant Zeiss is to help us get to that quality. I have Trevor with me today. And although this technology is something I'm learning about just like you with you, Trevor's gonna educate all of us. Trevor, first thing I wanna do before we get into the software that's behind you today is sure. let's connect immediately with the places and areas of the industry that need to start paying attention to the software we're getting ready to talk about. Sure, so a lot of people are aware of Zeiss on the metrology side of things. We're very big in the CMMs, CT, visual inspection, but we started as a microscope company 175 years ago in Germany, we started creating microscopes. So that's always been really the core sort of background of Zeiss and really where the genesis was and still a big focus for us in the industry. So we wanna make sure people are still aware that that's a big part of the Zeiss brand is visual inspection, uh, materials analysis and things like that. It really grounds us in where we came from. And I wanna talk a little bit today about where we fit in sort of the industrial space and why people might be doing it. I'm excited to learn. Yeah. And Again, like you guys know, I have a little sneak peek to these interviews, so I know a little <laughs> bit about where we're going with this. So I want to talk about material imperfections, finished yeah. product imperfections. You mentioned to me a needle in a haystack even. Sure. So this software and this technology is allowing us to do things faster, to find things faster, right. these imperfections. Would you mind diving into that a little bit? Yeah, so one of the things that makes Zeiss unique is that we make both light and electron microscopes. We're really the only company that does that. And because of that, we have a big advantage in the industry, which we like to call shuttle and find. Shuttle and find is where you fixture a component inside of a uh, holder that has fiducials. And we can locate those fiducials underneath the microscope. And then we have a basically coordinate system on that holder for where things on the sample are. So we can put it under a light microscope, which is much lower in magnification than an electron microscope, locate areas of interest, whether they're voids, uh, cracks, things that you might see on the sample that you wanna take a much closer look at under an electron microscope. Uh, so you'll then take that sample and put it into the electron microscope. And because we have that fixture with the fiducials, we can jump right into that area of interest. And it makes finding what you're looking for in the sample much, much easier than if you were to put it directly into an electron microscope, try to get in focus, try to hunt for that certain area of interest at a much, much higher magnification and with the absence of color. Sometimes color can also be sort of a determining factor in where you're trying to look, maybe a oxidized material, and you've got that little bit of a coppery color that you're trying to find and you can't do that under an EM. So now you've got your region of interest, you can zoom in much higher, look at the grain structure, maybe do some elemental analysis, see if that was in fact oxidization or some kind of contaminant, non-metallic inclusion that might be in the sample, now you can do your elemental analysis and know if there's something in that sample that shouldn't be there. Trevor, can I be honest with you for a minute? Absolutely. When I first started looking at things under a microscope, did you ever use one of those loops that like sure. had, had a basic mag? That's about the, the length of how far I've gone. So I'm learning so much from you today. And then I wanna talk about, because you have 175 years of yep. experience in this, I've talked to so many people in companies where What's normal to the spider is chaos to the fly. And we always talk about something <laughs> that might be at a level here and sure. we have to bring it here. So my next question with you is, is it complicated to learn what we're looking at right here, this software? <laughs> is it user friendly or are you just that smart? You're like, well, it's no. easy for me, Tony. I don't know about you. That's How a really good, That's a really good question. Uh, the instrument that we're in front of today is our smart zoom, which is a motorized digital microscope. That might seem complex in the fact that now we've got motors in here, this isn't just a basic optical system, but it's actually quite the opposite. Because we've got a fully motorized system, I'm able to create a big overview image of what we're looking at here. There's actually a second camera on the back of the optical system here that's gonna take a big overview image of what we're looking at, and it makes it a lot easier to locate certain things, and you just do a quick double click here, and then we're able to jump right to that area and I can zoom down in on it 
And even with just a quick scroll of the mouse, I can zoom in and out on certain areas of interest here. Makes driving around really simple. We're even built on a touch screen here, so I can double click on something, drive right to it on the sample. Makes navigating really, really simple. Very few actual mechanical things on the microscope itself, which is one of the things that intimidates people the most, especially on a high magnification system. So we've really tried to simplify that for the end user. Everything is very simple in the software, easy to use manuals here, very good menus. And we've even got sort of a best image selection here where it'll actually automate uh, different lighting techniques for you. It'll show you what you're looking at live here. It'll show you what it's gonna look like with the ring light. It'll show you what the ring light with some high dynamic range imaging if you need to blend exposures a little bit. It'll also show you a bright field image, which is light going straight down through the objective. It'll even do some mixed modes where it'll actually blend some of those lights together. And you can get little previews here by scrolling through the different areas here. It'll show you what they look like and then you just need to hit apply and it'll apply those settings right to it. So really, really easy to use. Uh, one other thing that's sort of interesting on this sample in particular uh, is that this is a uh, circuit board out of a battery control module in a uh, new energy vehicle. And uh, one thing that you'll notice here is that I've got a lot of reflection going on. This is coated in a conformal coating to help with environmental protection so that you don't get corrosion. But conversely, the problem with inspecting that is I get a whole lot of glare in here. I've got all these diodes from the uh, ring light that are reflecting back up into our sample. But we've got a neat mode here called ring light glare removal, where it's actually gonna oscillate this ring light. If you look at the actual lighting on the sample here, you can see it's sort of flickering. And what it's doing is it's showing the different angles of illumination, and then it's blending those images together to completely remove that glare. So when I turn it on and off, you can notice a huge difference in what I'm looking at here because it's filtering out that glare in the image by using more than one lighting technique. So makes it real easy to get an image on something that might be otherwise complicated. Uh, so even though this is a large motorized system, it's actually extremely simple to use. So somebody could learn how to use this in five, 10 minutes, be capturing images, taking some basic measurements and doing really good reporting for uh, say failure analysis or just quality documentation. And don't let me underplay this technology at all, but it almost <laughs> seems as intuitive as playing with Google Maps or something like that. It really felt like you went through that, like I could do it as well. It really is, yeah. If you can use Google Maps, you can use the Smart Zoom. Real easy with that overview image. You can jump to completely different samples on your field of view here. Zoom in and just a little quick focus with the knob and you are off and running here. So already in focus on a completely different part of the sample, completely different sample entirely. We moved from a circuit board onto a small aerospace turbine blade. One last question for you to close yeah. out this conversation. Would it be possible that I just saw Ant-Man in there as well? Did he <laughs> sneak into there also? You never know. You can go up to about 2000X optical on this microscope. So maybe we could find him if he's down in that single micron range. <laughs> Had to throw a joke in there at the end. My friends out there who are watching, if this technology is something you believe will enhance your shop, thanks to Trevor explaining it very articulately for all of us. Give Zeiss a call, reach out. Google will be your friend to find Zeiss. They're easy to find. What's the website as well, just in case someone forgot how to use Google? Uh, that's going to be zeiss.com slash metrology. It's that easy, my friends. Thank you all for your time. Trevor, thank you Absolutely. for explaining. Thank you, I Tony. really do appreciate it. This guy's probably done a webinar too. You can tell by how clear and concise <laughs> he is with his wording. We appreciate your time. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon.